You're watching Ramping Up Your English, a content-based approach to intermediate English learners to reach higher levels of proficiency. Our current unit is animals, and we've been enjoying some of the Earth's most beautiful invertebrates. Invertebrates don't have backbones or internal skeletons, but some have external skeletons called exoskeletons. This spiny creature is a good character of an animal called a crustacean. The hard shell with sharp points provides protection from many predators. Some crustaceans shed their hard shell during times of growth, leaving them vulnerable between times when their new shell hardens. Now this tree crab is another example of a crustacean. Unlike turtles, which are reptiles, crabs don't have a backbone underneath their shell. Their outer shell gives their body its shape and form. Their soft tissue is found inside. Some crabs have gills under those shells, allowing them to get oxygen directly from the water. The best known invertebrates are the insects we likely see every day. Now insects have exoskeletons, and the bodies of their adults are divided into three main parts. Pictured here are some insects with which you may be familiar. You may not know the English names yet, but you may recognize some of these. This diagram shows those three main body parts plus some common appendages. Now these include six legs and two antennas as seen on this beetle. Now the abdomen is the larger part uh, at the rear, and insects have tiny holes there through which they take in air to get oxygen. Beetles are the most numerous insects on Earth, and there are many different species, some of which are just now being discovered. Now, can you tell the insects from the other specimens here? They all have exoskeletons, but you can easily see the difference by counting the legs. The scorpion, the large one in the center, has eight legs, as does the spider in the upper left corner. The insects have six legs, now, scorpions are not insects, but they do have an exterior skeleton. They also have two large pinchers. They use those to hold their food so they can eat it. They keep their prey from escaping by stinging them with their long tail. There's a poison in the stinger on the end. That immobilizes their prey and makes it easier for them to eat it. Now, we have brown scorpions in southern Oregon. They can cause a lot of pain in someone who gets stung by them, but the venom is not lethal to humans. Now, one of the insects that's been on the world or in the world since before the age of dinosaurs is the dragonfly. Along with filling their crucial role in the balance of nature, these fascinating invertebrates delight our human children. A close cousin is the delicate-looking damselfly. Now, similar to dragonflies, these insects are often found around water. In fact, boats spend most of their times, their lives, underwater. It's part of that dramatic change they go through as they mature called metamorphosis. This one is seen eating an insect. That's the main diet of dragonflies and damselflies. Can you see, if you think back on what you just saw, there was an insect wing on the leaf from what it was eating. Now, this is another damselfly. Their life cycle begins as an egg, then a larva, and finally as a mature adult that people see flying around or hanging around on a leaf. Dragonflies and damselflies are closely related. The best way to distinguish them is to observe them at rest. Are the wings still extended to the side? Then it's probably a dragonfly. If the wings are folded back, you're probably looking at a damselfly. Both are predators, which is true of the larval stage and the adult stage. Larvae are said to eat just about anything in the water smaller than themselves. Adults catch insects in the air using their excellent eyesight and their amazing, of flying, their amazing flying ability and their legs and feet. Females lay clutches of up to 1,500 eggs while their mate holds them up in the air once the eggs hatch out, the larvae sink into the water to begin life as a macroinvertebrate. Loss of wetland habitat threaten dragonflies as they need water for the majority of their lifespan. Most species spend most of their lives underwater as a nymph. 
Now, damselflies form external gills for this part of their life cycle. Dragonflies have their gills on the inside. When ready for adulthood, the nymph floats to the top of the water and begins using its lungs. They swallow enough air to puff up their body and their wings spread out for the first time. There's so many really cool insects. Speaking in general terms, invertebrates, including insects, begin the life cycle as one of an extremely large, numerous egg bunch, and some hatch into nymphs, which are just smaller copies of their adult parents. Now, those that are not eaten by something grow up to be adults, mate, lay eggs, and die, starting the cycle all over again. Notwithstanding that short life cycle, other insects begin as eggs, but then take a larval form that's totally different from the adult. Those that go through complete metamorphosis then pass into a pupa stage, which doesn't look like the larva or the adult, and finally become an adult, mate with another, lay eggs, start the cycle over again. A great insect to watch and witness these changes is the darkling beetle. Hatching from eggs, these larvae are called mealworms. Now that name is misleading because these are not worms. They're the larva stage of a beetle. The larvae grow larger, shedding their skin from time to time from their earlier smaller bodies. Now watch how these students react when they become acquainted the first time with the larva. Oops. Oops. Uh, is yellow. Yes. <laughs> okay. I love it. Yeah. And so it's flexible. Oh my gosh, look at it. Just look at it. Seriously. But it's a part it's a part of me. Yellow. <laughs> The magnifying glass? My alley. Smash it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see him. I want to go like that with the wheel. Hey, I never done that before. <laughs> I, I found two little things at the very end. They're probably the little spikes. <laughs> they are. Well, I already have them. It feels weird when they're on your hands. Oh. They tickle <laughs> that. They, 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 they have like little weird. white stuff right here on the uh, end where the um where the little spikes are. They have little um they have little, um, they have little yeah, white stuff like scratch, and you look really scratch. close. <laughs> and I don't know what that is, but it looks really cool. Yeah. After three weeks, we watched larvas change to pupas. In other three weeks, pupas started turning to dark. Adult darkling beetles. Still. The kids eventually get pretty attached to the larva, especially after handling them and measuring their growth. Then the unexpected happens. The larva skin splits open and this pale white pupa comes out. Some of us were lucky enough to see it exactly when it happened. Usually we just find the pupas among the remaining larvae. The larvae rarely move, but they attract much attention from the students examining them with magnifiers. Eventually the pupas transform themselves into adults. Again, most students are reluctant to touch the adults, but it takes far less time for them to warm to the idea. Now, there's more to of the tickling that goes on as the adults crawl across the skin. Description skills are stretched as the students learn ways of describing the beetles at all stages and note the changes that take place at each stage. When the kids have witnessed is complete metamorphosis. Now, not all insects go through all these stages, but they all do surprising things as they change from eggs to adults. Let's learn more about insects from this video. Hey, you're the bug. <laughs> Come He's on, All this excitement is about the emergence of a darkling beetle. It's not just any bug. Students have watched this insect grow from the larva stage 
to the adult that crawls on their arm. There's some reluctance to touch the larva, but it soon becomes fascination. The dark and the color of, of um, their skin is darker, darker. darker. Like they're getting into the pupa um, stage. It is in the pupa stage. Their tails are little. Oh, well, well. Look at its head, it's black. No, go. No, it's not. Come back. Yeah, it, You're looking at the tail. <laughs> That's the head. One of the first surprises is when the larva changes into a pupa, leaving its skin behind. The kids learn patience, giving the larva time to grow into an adult. I asked what students learned about insects. Insects have six legs. Like this and some insects eat other insects and insects have three body parts. What's that? Insects have three body parts. Can you show me? Insects have three body parts. Can you show me on the insect? Show me the three body parts. What are they called? Head, thorax, abdomen. What do you know about ants? Um, <laughs> they live in colonies. Keep going, yeah. What, what else? Oh, I know. They use their heads to block passageways that they don't want enemies to come in. So they use their heads, they put their heads like in the hole like that. <laughs> you know a lot. Okay, Jennifer, what do you know about ants? Um, they use the antenna to um, communicate. That's true. What do you know about bees? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know something about bees. Oh, I don't. They're hairy. <laughs> I got one. I got one. I got one. I got one. They they dance to tell them where to go. Like and go get honey and nectar. Some. Yeah, where they find. Not them. All of them. Don't they live the wasps? What do you... Doesn't the wasps turn um? They're wax. The paper? No, that's wasps. That's what I said. Wasps. The wasps. And then. Um, oh my god. Conflict over here. Do it with honey wax. 